everyone, my name is M. Hags Art. I'm a traditional artist and I just recently did my very first Comic-Con Artist Alley. And in this video, I will be discussing everything I learned from that experience. First, I'm gonna talk about money stuff. So like how much I spent on the table, how much I spent on everything in general and the setup and supplies and things like that, what I got in preparation for the Comic-Con and then some things I also learned the hard way through this experience. I'm also going to link some vlogs that I watched in my research preparing for my Artist Alley and those will be linked in my description below because I found them super helpful in preparing as well as the vlogs that I've done before this in case you're interested in seeing more of the vlog experience of me doing this Artist Alley. So for the money, I spent $325 on the table, and this was for Terrificon at Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. The money was interesting because I did prepare to accept payment in a number of different forms, such as getting a Square card reader, uh, I set up a business Venmo account, and then of course taking cash. I was very surprised that most people paid with cash. I don't know if that's always the case with an artist alley or an art market type thing. I have only done a couple of them. I did two art markets previously and I think most people paid with cash there as well. But I was surprised that at a Comic Con it was also mostly cash. So just in case you're preparing to do your first Comic Con, that might be something good to know. But I definitely don't think it hurt to have the card reader and the Venmo account. I think I only ended up taking one Venmo payment and then I think like three card payments. It was not a lot. So I'm gonna talk about taxes really quick because this was honestly one of the most stressful parts of preparing for the artist alley because I was just really scared about getting this part wrong. And I want a disclaimer that I am not an accountant. I am not a tax expert. This is not me giving like legally abiding advice. <laughs> But I will just speak to my own experience. I was doing a Comic Con in Connecticut in the United States. So I honestly just highly suggest that if you're going to be doing um, a Artist Alley or an art market or something like that in another state that you haven't done before, then honestly just call them. I ended up calling them because I was having a lot of trouble with like logging in and all these things through the tax website. It was giving me some technical difficulties because I used to live in Connecticut. So it still thought I was like trying to log in as a resident to submit my like yearly taxes, which I was not trying to do. I was trying to log in as a business, but because I do a sole proprietorship, which is under my social security number, I think it was getting confused. Yeah, make sure you're doing this of figuring out the taxes ahead of time. I think you can do it within a few weeks, but I honestly did it like months in advance just because I was so fearful about it not being correct and me not getting the proper permit that I needed in time. I ended up paying $16 in taxes because you'll find out as we continue to talk about money that I did not have a huge profit, so therefore I did not have to make a huge payment in taxes, which was nice. You do have to do it within 30 days after the market, at least that is the rules in Connecticut. Probably very similar rules in other states. So again, just keeping that in mind that after you do this, make sure you're logging back in and checking in on how quickly you need to submit your taxes so that again, you're not getting in trouble. Next, I'm gonna go into just like total profit of money I made and like how much I spent on supplies, the setup, and what I actually got. So the total profit that I made to not keep you in suspense any longer is actually $243.23. That profit is not as if I subtracted everything that I had to pay. That is totally just what I made. So if you are already doing the math uh, with that being about $250 and I paid $325 for the table, I am already in the negative. <laughs> but it's okay, it was my first one. And of course I had to buy a bunch of other stuff. So that's gonna put me further in the red. So. If you're about to do your first artist alley, again, keeping all this in mind, you're gonna be spending a lot up front to get your setup and your system going and your supplies. And then hopefully as you do more and more, you're spending less and less, right? That makes sense. I'm just gonna talk about too what I charged for each 
item that I sold because this was something I also really struggled with was like deciding on a fair price that not only is fair to me as the artist because I don't want to like undersell myself for the time I spent on making this art right but I also want to kind of be among what everyone else is charging and to be honest, I almost wanted to be on the low end. As someone who's starting out and doesn't have a big following and doesn't have a big name for myself yet, I did think strategically it made more sense for me to be almost on the lower end of what people charge for this type of thing. And by lower end, I'm literally talking like a few dollars. I'm not like vastly under selling myself by like half the price or something like that. Because again, you wanna pay yourself a fair price. <laughs> So I sold stickers and I did $3 per sticker. That's pretty standard. And then I had a deal where you could buy three, get one free. So basically it ends up being $9 for four stickers. So for prints, I sold two different sizes. I have five by fives, which I sold for $6. And then I have five by sevens, which I sold for $7. So just a dollar more for a slightly bigger size. Then I also have five what is this size <laughs> seven by tens seven by ten then i also have seven by tens that i sold for ten dollars and then i have eight by eights that i also sold for ten dollars just to make it a little easier this is the pretty standard price that you find for prints if anything again i was a little bit on the lower end i also did a buy three get one free for the prints and i will say that the sticker deal was definitely more popular than the print deal i felt like it was most common that people wanted to come up and buy two stickers so it was very easy for me to say oh if you get a third one you actually get two more because you'll get the fourth for free and that really kind of helped convince people to pick out a third and the fourth one now I'm going to talk about cost of my setup and everything that I like bought. I won't go into the nitty gritty of how much each thing costs because that'll take forever. But just so you know, I bought a tablecloth, some uh, dish racks for displaying my prints and things like that. I did buy a collapsible wagon to cart everything back and forth from my car. I bought those plastic cubes that a lot of people use for art markets and things to display. I bought a business card holder, bags, some miscellaneous storage type things, and I paid uh, my aunt and my best friend who actually tabled with me to do some banners as decoration and some other things like that. So altogether, I paid $194.65 for the display. I spent $93.51 on miscellaneous decor. And then I also bought um, supplies, obviously. So the stickers cost me $360.59. The prints cost me $52 because I work in a university and I just paid to have them printed at my university's copy print shop. So if you are a student, uh, I highly recommend just using your copy print store because it's probably a lot cheaper <laughs> than some of the other options out there. I paid $57.77 for the business cards and the bonus was the fact that I only had to drive. I didn't have to pay for flight and hotel to go to this Comic Con. So altogether I paid $484.75 on supplies. Then I also paid for me and my friend's meals uh, as, her, as a thank you for her helping me table and altogether paying for our food for three days was $306.85. So if you add all that together, how much I spent on the stuff that wasn't the table cost, it was $1,079.76 plus $325 for the table makes $1,404.76. So that's how much I spent on the whole Comic-Con getting ready for your first one. Like obviously I'm not gonna spend $1,400 on every Comic-Con I do after this because now I have basically all the supplies I need. I have a lot of prints and stickers left still, so I should be good to go to start my next Comic-Con with very little cost, which is nice. For how much I actually got of each thing, I will say I got 50 of each sticker. If you use Sticker Mule like I did, 
They offer as little as 10 stickers that you can order at a time, which I think is super helpful because I don't think buying 50 stickers when you're first starting out is completely necessary. And if you're looking to decrease the cost a little bit, it definitely can help in terms of decreasing the total cost, although your cost per sticker is going to go up. So your profit per sticker is gonna go down when you buy less, but it really just depends on your perspective of would you rather spend less upfront? Personally, I kind of wish I did that. I kind of regret not thinking about how I could have bought less than 50 stickers. I went in very naively. I thought I was gonna sell way more. <laughs> and we'll get into that later. I did 30 of each print and that was definitely way more than I needed. And uh, the only reason that I end up being like butthurt about this is because I had to hand cut them. I don't cut with scissors, but I'm still cutting with my paper cutter and it still was a uh, time consuming and tedious process. I probably really only needed about 10 to 15 of each maybe just to be safe. So overall, when it comes to the supplies, I definitely think I could have bought less per product and maybe spent less so I could have used more money on buying more diverse products. So I really only had a few sticker options. I think it was like seven. And then my prints, which I do have a pretty wide variety of prints. I feel like personally, I think I have like 10 or 11, I think which again, I feel like is pretty decent for starting out. Although if you are gonna be primarily a print salesperson, then I guess maybe having like a whole wall of options is also helpful, but obviously I'm not quite there yet. I would have looked maybe into like doing some small batch keychains. I know keychains are quite popular. So now let's jump into overall what I learned from the whole experience. First thing I learned was not breaking even, especially on your table price is actually very common, especially when you're starting out. I did not anticipate this, but then when I talked to some of my neighbors at the neighboring tables, they all talked about how breaking uh, even on the table price or making table as some people call it, uh, is kind of the goal a lot of times when you're first starting out or when you're a smaller artist, also depending on what you're selling. Another thing, and it might seem common sense, but honestly still could have done better on this, which was making prices on everything big and clear and like front and center and directly on the products. I thought just having a few things hanging around my setup that said the prices would be good enough. Or like, for example, I had a chalkboard easel that showed all my stickers and then the stickers themselves were in a basket next to the chalkboard easel for people to pick out themselves. And then I had the price per sticker on the chalkboard easel, but not on the basket because I thought that having it on at least one was fine. Nope people still were asking how much the stickers were. And then eventually I just moved the sticker from the chalkboard easel and then taped it on the basket. And I think it helped a little bit after that. So yeah, putting big price tags on everything and making them like front and center and putting it on every single thing, even though you might think, oh, I have a list of my prices here on the side. And if people want, no, they're not gonna look. <laughs> Honestly, you can almost not bother with like a small list of prices on the side because you'd rather have them on just each thing. Um, so that when people are looking at a print, it says $10 right next to the print. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but also having more products and offering more variety, I think would have been helpful. I'm not saying that you need to have a big elaborate setup, a million different products, but I think having a little more variety for myself, even if I just had like had more stickers, I think would have been more helpful. I think people just like stickers and they like that they're low cost and they're kind of practical in a way because then they can stick them on things like their water bottles, their laptops, whatever. A print's a little more like high commitment, I guess, cause you're gonna have to like hang it on your wall or something. There's really not much else you can do with it besides that. Definitely thinking about location more, whether it's the town the Comic-Con is taking place in, that can be important because that will indicate whether it's going to be a smaller Comic-Con or a larger one and how many people are probably going to go to it. The location of your table 
plays a lot more of a factor than I realized as well. I thought naively that most people who go to a Comic-Con are gonna browse every table, take their time looking through everything. That is definitely not the case. I was so naive thinking that way. Even though the people near me were very kind and generous and fun to talk to, they had very different art styles than myself. And I think that worked in their favor in terms of the type of Comic-Con it was, which is, it was a comic book focused Comic-Con. So uh, their styles lent a little more towards that and mine definitely, I don't think did. So uh, thinking about the type of Comic-Con also matters. I was very foolish in the fact that I just found one that finally had available space. So I jumped right in and booked it as soon as I could. But doing your research definitely to make sure that your type of art is going to do well at that type of Comic-Con. So for example, you might want to focus on comic book focused ones if you do have a lot of comic book focused art, if your art style leans that way, if you do superhero type stuff, or like I hate to generalize, but it's just kind of how it is, is that if your art leans a little more masculine, that might help you out in that setting as well. Whereas if you are like more kawaii or pastels or just like myself, I use a lot of bright colors. I paint more like landscape and my art looks very painterly. So maybe going to a place like an anime con or just a more focused fan con could actually lend itself more helpful in terms of selling my style better. Another thing I did that was super helpful too is, but I did this after I signed up for the Comic-Con, so it was a little too late, but it still was helpful to at least for me to know what to expect was you can YouTube search walkthroughs of the Comic-Cons from past years maybe, and that way you'll know what to expect. So if you're like debating on signing up for a Comic-Con, but you're not sure how it's gonna be in terms of the audience, the size, how your art style will do there, maybe looking up a walkthrough on YouTube and watching that will help you. Another helpful tip that I learned is having a second person is definitely important, I think, especially for your first Comic-Con. I was lucky that one of my best friends uh, decided to do it with me. And so it was not only helpful in terms of like having someone who can watch your table as you go to the bathroom, uh, go get you food when you're hungry, but also just like having someone as company was really nice. Uh, truth be told, I, there's a lot more downtime than I expected. It can be kind of boring and the days can feel long. So that helps to have someone there to keep you company. Also segue, bring things to do for sure. Like I worked on some art while I sat at the table. I brought like a book and some other things to do, but I don't think I really dove into those much because I felt like I really wouldn't be able to have focus on those things, but definitely doing like art in a sketchbook or something like that. Something I did to increase some engagement with some folks that bought stuff from me was that I had a little mason jar sitting out so people could write suggestions of things I should draw and then I posted them to my stories. It also hopefully encouraged them to follow me on Instagram so that they could see their suggestion come to life. But yeah, these long days at the Comic Cons interacting with a lot of people can be very exhausting, truth be told, especially if you're an introvert like myself. It is long days, long hours, and it's a lot of talking to people, so you have to get kind of comfortable talking to customers and being maybe a little outside your comfort zone if you're not really one to do those things or if you're a little more introverted. Luckily, I have a lot of experience working in customer service, so I have that natural ability to turn on a friendly, helpful demeanor. But for me, it just gets tiring after a while. And I think there is a skill in terms of developing how to talk to Artist Alley customers. I think I definitely can improve on that of like how to engage folks so that they're maybe a little more likely to buy something. I know it sounds manipulative, but we gotta do what we gotta do, right? <laughs> and the last point I'm gonna talk about is how I think this was a very humbling experience and a good reality check for myself. While, you know, I like my art style and I think I've improved a lot over the last few years, it definitely was a reality check. Like, is my skill level where it should be in order to do these things? Is my skill level at the same level of the people at the tables around me? 
and do I need to work on my skills and improve to perform better at these comic cons or art markets or whatever they may be. Are art markets more of your vibe? This is actually something I've been thinking a lot about, like with my very painterly style, even though I have some like nerdy references, they're very subtle. So honestly, sometimes like people don't even know what they are. So could I do better at just like art markets? I don't know, I've done a few. Sorry, my cat's meowing. <laughs> Typical. Do you wanna come say hi? Okay, here he is. Um, let's see if he wants to stay here. <laughs> and also at the end of the day, asking yourself, is this something you really wanna do? I won't lie, the thought came across my mind quite a few times over the weekend. While I think overall it was a good experience, good learning experience, I was like, this is a lot of work. Like, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you. It is a lot of work. Like, the time it takes to make sure you're showing up to the venue on time, figuring out the parking situation, unloading your stuff, setting up, whether you're doing it the night before or the morning of, um, and then just being at the con itself. Obviously, some Comic Cons have different days and different times that they do. This one was a three day. So overall, I will say it was a great learning experience. I don't regret doing it because it's something I've always wanted to do. So I'm really happy I crossed it off my bucket list and I am going to try to sign up for more next year and definitely being more intentional about the type of Comic-Con Artist Alley I'm signing up for so that hopefully I can do a little bit better. And then also definitely trying to work more on developing products that are meant to be either sticker products or keychains so that um I have more variety and that my booth will stand out a little bit more in that way and I'll look a little more professional and polished and yeah just continuing to work on my art skill too so that I get better and maybe can perform better and people want to buy it more because it's looks nicer and my skill level is there so again it was very like humbling in terms of reminding myself that I still have a long way to go and improving my art and it's something I do want to get better at and that's kind of exciting within itself too and I hope this has been helpful for you if you've been thinking about doing a comic con uh, again I will link all of my research and things that I found helpful in preparing for this in my description below. I'm also going to link all of the products that I bought and used. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I am going to be segueing into doing more art type videos. I used to do bullet journaling, but now I'm going to kind of do art, maybe some journaling still, so we'll see. And you can always check out my other Comic-Con videos where I did a prep vlog and then a vlog for the Comic-Con itself. Essen says goodbye. <laughs> he's like falling asleep in my arms, it's so sweet. Now he's mad I moved him. Uh, I'm sorry, bud, I shouldn't have disturbed you. You're just being a little cuddle monster right now. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Bye.